Yes. A lot has happened in Kerala in the last 24 hours. God's own country has lost many people in the severe landslides that has happened in Kerala's Vainar district. Well, hi, you are watching DNA's Editor's Table. This is Vikas Mavi and with me in the studio today is Mr. Tanvir Azam. Tanvir ji, let's jump right into it. Uh, what has happened? See, I see the reason behind this, the disaster. I will call it a disaster which has happened in Vainar in which more than 150 people have already lost their life and many are still trapped. So I fear that the death toll will increase. I think I think there are a few reasons which are behind this disaster. One is the, the fragile terrain. Vainard in Vainard the terrain is very fragile. Second is the kind of pressure which we are putting on our environment. The loss of forest cover, which I mean, and the third is global warming. They all have combined together and this has resulted in this kind of disaster which has claimed so many lives within hours. See, in, there are a lot of uh, hot spots, landslide hot spots in Kerala and Vainad is one among them. Idukki yeah. and all, they have, they are like, they have been identified as the hot spot of landslides. In Vainad, there was a time when the forest cover was very, very high, it was around 85%, okay. which has now been reduced. Vainad, like many other hilly areas, Vainad has also developed into a tourist place and all. So, people have removed forest cover just to make way so for buildings and, and yeah, infrastructure development and all. And one thing which we have to think and these kind of incidents always give us a warning. Kerala have witnessed a very massive flood also like 3-4 years ago. Right. Loss of life, lives were lost in that flood also. So, we have to see now that we are doing the development of this way. The same has been happening in this Himachal Pradesh also, in Uttarakhand also. We are developing them as like tourist hotspots, we are building hotels, we are building all kind of but resorts and all. But a lot of pressure, lot of pressure on the hills. Lot of pressure on the hills and... The, and like we saw in uh, Joshi Mutt, the infrastructure yeah. development is so much that uh, land is, you know, uh, has broken down. And um, nature has a, its own way of giving it back to us. And when nature responds, then this kind of disaster happens. See, there was a study which, which, which showed that in like 1950s, around 85% of Vainard was under forest cover. And this has now reduced. The forest cover has been now no reduced. Second, which we, I, I was talking about is climate change. Wo jo pura western ghat, eastern ghat ka jo pura ilaka hai, usme climate change ka, there's a lot of impact of, on climate change and a lot of hotspots have developed. Hotspots which are like this complete recipe for disaster. Any time, either landslide will hit them or the floods will hit them, those areas. So, the governments, they should also understand this fact and they should also take necessary corrective steps to keep things uh, under check. Because, like, I was reading a report which claimed that the, uh, the climate change is affecting the movement of the sea, the current of the sea and the movement and the change has affected it so much that the, the water, the heavy influx of water which has come from the Arabian Sea and which has caused the disaster is also one of the reasons why this kind of, this, this disaster happened and it, it was raining, it was raining very heavily and in the morning when the people were sleeping this sudden influx of water came and it is, lots of villages got destroyed. People were left with no time because they were sleeping. Right. It happened at around, the first, the first tragedy happened at around 2 a.m. and the second one happened at around no 4. No one was ready. Yeah, no one was ready for this. People, see, Actually, even... Actually, night, people wouldn't even know that what hit them. Yes, that's why, like you, you summed it up very, in a very nice manner that no one was awake, so they didn't know what, what was going to hit them. And by the time it became, and everyone knew about it, it was too late. Uh, NDRF team and then later the army was also called into. Actually, when we were uh, getting to know about it, in the initial reports, we thought ki maybe it is not as much as a uh, big of a landslide, but then came the army and that means it was yeah, yeah. business. It, it, it is, the rescue operations are still going on and I think it will take one or more, two, one, two more days to be of sure that we have rescued everyone because see, it's a landslide, it's a proper, it's a very disastrous landslide and a lot of bodies, I, I, I fear that a lot of people are still trapped in the debris. So, it will take a lot of time and the, I, like I said in my introductory remark that I, I think that the death toll will rise, it, it will cross 200 and this, the Kerala government should have to look into this because they have been getting hit by these kind of disasters very frequently right. and I don't call them natural disaster. 
i call them man made disasters these 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 things are bound to happen if you are playing with nature and if you are not balancing your act these things are bound to happen we are seeing this happening across the country not only in kerala we have seen this happen in himachal also in uttarakhand also all these hilly areas we are we are we are mistreating our hills we are and i would say in our cities too at times we do see that uh, roads uh, get broken down just because the land uh, below the road has washed away yeah the, the this so, mining this tunneling of the hills and in zone which are like which has been identified as ecologically sensitive zone by our scientists by our experts still we are like overlooking moving, the facts yeah, yeah we are moving ahead with this kind of thermal deep thermal power projects tunneling and mining and all so you there is a question which i have heard when i was in my college that we are doing development but for whom and at what cost see we we are do, we are developing a, like suppose in wayanad we are developing wayanad then the villages which are which are be bore the brunt of this disaster these all have been developed in the past 10 or 15 years they have got new buildings new infrastructure new roads and all now they have paid the price for it so i i think that we have to think very very like cautiously we have to take advice from weather experts from climate experts from geologists and all and then we have to plan things so that we don't face this kind of disaster so these are the three main regions the, the terrain was already very fragile in wayanad second global warming and third the reduction of the forest cover the forest like you know the trees in the forest they hold the soil together but when when the trees are cut then the soils are prone to landslides you no know, they become very weak because the roots and you know, they hold the soil together and right. once you remove those roots the soil become very very like prone to move, movement once the water comes in and when the water comes in a huge amount of number which in huge volume then you can don't you can't imagine the kind of destruction which a water body can cause and this is what has happened in kerala also so i think right. it's time that we should wake up and we should it's these are these are the wake up calls which we are receiving those who are dismissing that and climate it's high time that we yeah, yeah, focus there are, there are many naysayers who will say that climate change is nothing and we have to develop but i will just like to ask them that some same question development for whom and at what cost right well in this time of need let's pray for kerala and hope things get well soon enough uh, so this was tanvir azam's take on the issue what do you think about it tell us in the comments down below and for more such content keep watching dna